Central States Conference family. Thanks for joining me 
on this journey. March is Women's History Month and what history than our own. For the next four weeks after today, every Thursday, we will post new matriarchs of our conference that will go back to Camp Shady Hill. Excuse me, before Camp Shady Hill. We have my grandmother's uh, recording and she remembered that conference was a company wasn't even a conference at the time. So of course, you'll have a slideshow uh, and we'll have some music. The music, uh, you probably already heard it, feature the Golden Airs. They're from St. Louis back in the 70s. I remember uh, we had a joint um, youth congress and that's where I heard them. And it's awesome to go back. My brother had so much music and archives for conference wide. So uh, we've been really, really blessed. So tonight's chit chat will feature my grandmother who passed in 2015, Sister King from Agape in St. Louis, and Elder Mitchell from Berean, our first ordained woman elder in this conference. I really enjoyed doing this and let them take their time. I just let them take their time. So please hear it all the way through. There's some powerful tips. And you know, this is gonna be where you can come back and forth, get on whenever you want to. That's why we took the time to pre-record and you can access this anytime you want to on our website. And so I'm excited about that. Also, we want to thank everyone for their love, prayers, and cards and contributions uh, to my mom who just passed away a, a few months ago. So last year, you know, you would hear and see me hit and miss from time to time. Uh, my sisters and I were taking care of my mother as well as my stepfather. And so I really want to thank you guys, even for those who contributed to her memoriam. So I really thank you for that. And I've been blessed with a woman of God who is my mom. You'll see some of her pictures, or if they hadn't already showed it, it's in there. And it was kind of hard for me to talk about her at this time. So just enjoy the few pictures that I could um, deal with or handle right now. And if there's any information of other women, that are in our conference, um, let me know. Let me know, because I want to get their story. We're really just not going to stop in March. We're going to keep on, because we need an archive of the history of this conference. And I really enjoy it myself. And listen to it all the way in, because I'm going to give you some uh, information about our retreat that is in October. And you will not believe who we have as our guest speakers. So I'm excited and I thank you so much for your love and your patience and your support that you've given to me and my family. Keep us in prayer. Thank you and listen, enjoy yourself today.
Well, you were talking about how you all, how you all would uh, ride the bus after y'all were uh, worshiping in the homes. Y'all finally got a building. I think it used to be a bar or something. Y'all used to ride the bus downtown and stay all day. Yeah, we had to. We couldn't afford to. It was out in 3rd Street now where ain't no me used to live. <laughs> Across the street there was a saloon. A saloon. And so we finally bought that. They had the saloon go ahead up the cell. <laughs> and so we bought this saloon. It was out on 3rd Street. And we was living out here on 21st Street. Wow. <laughs> so when we had to go to church, and that morning, they ate breakfast, they fixed their lunch, and we all went to church on the bus. And instead of coming back at noon on the bus and you can go back to pay why, we would eat at church every day. We were all that live far like that. We'd take and fix our lunch after we eat breakfast and take it with us. And we'd sit at church all day long because we had to. We had no car for to be riding back and forth. <laughs> we did good to get there. But it just cost us that one thing. Wow. I remember you were talking about um, <clears throat> when it first started meeting in the homes, there was a guy that came here that sang really well. That's how I become an ad business. <laughs> I didn't become an ad business about pe people, you know, speaking to me or trying to read to me out the Bible and everything. This means I was far in the blood. I don't know if you ever heard that song. Uh, and he would bring his bass in on the end. Far in the blood. <laughs> and so, old man said, Y'all come again, they live about a block up the street from us, on Pump Street, they live with us, and we live about a block, two blocks down on this side. And so I said, well, I tell you, if that man from Ashes and sang this power in the blood, I said, I'll come. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably won't. I said, mm. she said, well, he'll be there, we make he'll be there, because they came every Sunday evening. We didn't have any churches there. They had church in my in-laws' houses every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. Mm. And I would go up there, but they only live two blocks away. Right? So you come to church in the morning, and I said, oh, I don't know. I said, that man's going to sing us power in the blood. I'll be there. <laughs> so she said, okay, okay. I was going to say, I'll have him to sing it. And we went up on that man saying, he had the bass. I think his bass is better, lower than your dad's. Really? He had bass. And wow. everybody said, power in the blood. Yeah, power in the blood. Really? <laughs> yeah. What was his name? I remember he told me. Inge. Inge, yeah, brother really Inge. Uh -huh. Wow. And they belong to Axis in church. They were the local lads uh -huh. down there. So they came up here and got a church started in St. Uh -huh. Joe. But they would come. They didn't have no church building. They had it every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock at my husband's mother's home. And people would get there at for the church. That's where we had church. Wow, Grandma. But now he sang his power in the blood. Oh, yeah, I ain't never heard no bass like that going on. <laughs> How long did y'all worship in the home before you start building your church? I mean, worshiping, worshiping his home in their house about um, probably close to a year. I don't think it was a year, about close hmm. to a year. And then there was a place down here on 19th and the Santa on this side. And it was a hole in this church there. And they let us rent their church on Saturdays because they just had church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And so we would pay and have it rented up there. So finally, while we were paying rent up there, I'd strip cross street from where Antonio lived. That used to be a saloon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the saloon closed down, but they built it up to sell. So we got together in Kansas City. Uh, we was a mission then. We went a conference. We went to be mm -hmm. so they called yeah. us a mission. Kansas City Mission head of the churches in this neighborhood gave us a little money to help out. And General Conference gave us a little money. And we work, work, work. And then once in a while, 
everybody would give a whole day's pay on the building thing. Wow. And that's how we got our church built, but it wasn't the five families. And all of them families had probably five or six kids. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had the smallest, and I had three. And them Burtons had six. And yeah, it was, just, it was just the Burtons, the Wilkinsons, the Guns. It was just five, five four or five families that built that church, that church up there. Built it from the ground, brand new. Big church. That's awesome. <laughs> Then somebody knows that church got burned down. Mm -hmm. They laid it on this guy. He was uh, he used to come to visit church sometime and act like he didn't like that in church. I think it was a little mm -hmm. off or something. Mm -hmm. And they said somebody said that he said for our name, but anyhow, about three or two, about three o'clock in the morning, at yeah, three or four o'clock in the morning, somebody rang the telephone. And mm -hmm. they said, Brother Dixon, hey Mr. Wilkerson. You broke that church from the 21st in Sylvania? He said, yeah. He said, well, it's on fire. The fire fight up there so it's blazing at 3 o'clock mm. in the morning. Mm. Man, sure me slammed that phone down, and me and him both got dressed. The kids were sleeping in bed. We left them to sleep. Mm -hmm. So we dressed and went up there. And when we went out the front door, we seen I was blazed. Just mm. going up. And we ran up the hill. Nothing we could do then. The firefighters were there, and they couldn't, hold, they couldn't pick it out. They couldn't so save it at all. I don't know who done that. But they never did find out how it happened. Somebody said that that man <laughs> probably sit on fire. But anyway, I think he should be up to it. Yeah, it was a blessing anyway, because we got the church mm -hmm. over there. We took the money from that church and we bought that right, church right. over there. I just and have so many good memories. Crying, mm -hmm. Oh, I we know. We were up on that street crying like a baby. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to do? Oh, my God. But they gave us a pretty good insurance offer for it. So we were able to pay cash for this church where we are now. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah, I, you. I remember those days on. there. We oh, were downstairs there. division. Yeah. Remember, Grandma? Yeah, I've had that oh. downstairs division about 30 years. I'm yeah, you did. You. That's all I knew was for you and Aunt Omeal. Yeah, downstairs. Yeah, I'm here downstairs. <laughs> I, I was downstairs when we went over here to this church <laughs> where we are now. I said, I'm looking here. I'm about 80 and years old now. Somebody's. <laughs> Okay, good evening. I guess this evening now I'm here with Sister King from St. Louis. And as I said, we're celebrating Women's History Month. And I felt that it was very important just to stay home in Central States. We have a lot of history here. And um, a lot of our women who are still here, we're standing on their shoulders. And I'm so grateful. So I've asked different women of our conference, would they share with me how they came to know the Lord and even becoming a Seventh-day Adventist and where they go to church and it, just any testimony that they want to share. So Sister King, thank you again. I know we've been chit-chatting, but um, I want to turn it over to you. And thank you so much for being an icon in our conference because there's certain people that you look for, like I told you before, when we go yeah. to certain events, whether it's federations, you Congress, camp meeting, whatever. And you're one of those ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> yes, my name is uh, L. Ann Petty King. Many people have been wondering for years what CL for. My first name is Loida. Oh. Many people don't know that. I, did I didn't like know. it for a long time, but now I kind of like Lorda, so I use it. Okay. Lorda and King, but most often it's L and King. Okay. I first will tell you that I'm a coal miner's daughter. Okay. And that's because I was born in Parrish, Alabama, <laughs> which many people have never even heard of. Okay. It's a very little city, a <laughs> town in Alabama. It's about 30 or 40 miles from Birmingham, Alabama. Mm. We lived on the main street in Parrish, Alabama. Now, we were Christians. I was a Christian from a child. We were Baptist, Baptist bred. Baptist born, going to be Baptist till we're dead. <laughs> my father's brother was the pastor of the Baptist church there, and my father was a head deacon. Okay. We lived on, uh, like I said, the main street across from the only grocery store in town. <laughs> so the petties knew everybody. 
Well, to make a long story short, one day my father decided to move to this little place called American Junction. Mm -hmm. I looked on the map and it is just a junction just about five miles out of the little town of Parrish. Uh -huh. And that's where people of other color that don't oh. look like us, oh, many okay. of them were there. Okay. My father decided to move there on a hill above some race uh, uh, railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. I was not very happy about that as a child, naturally, <laughs> because I left my friends. And it was a little walk to get back to anywhere down those railroad tracks. Oh, but that. anyway, as God would have it, mm -hmm. we moved next door to a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Love. Okay. And they were Caucasians. There was a white picket fence. Hmm. Mr. Love would call us to that fence to talk to us. The two black families lived on one side of the fence and there were others of the other persuasion on the other side and down the hill. We were the only black families there too. Wow. So one day my, Mr. Love said to my father, Bill, why do you go to church on Sunday? I mean, on, on Sunday. And dad said, because that's what the Bible says do. It's the Lord's day. Mr. Love said, okay, Bill, if you show me in the Bible where I should go to church on Sunday, that's exactly what I'll do. My mm -hmm. dad said, no problem. I can do that. <laughs> so he got his Bible. He studied every day. Mm -hmm. When he finished work, he got that Bible. Wow. Well, as you can tell, I'm at Venture, so he could not find <laughs> <laughs> he could not find oh, where Sunday was today to go to church. Come so on. he said, without any Bible studies, had no idea where we could go to church because we'd never heard of Adventists. Evidently, there was a company or some they were meeting in each other's homes or mm -hmm. something, but we didn't do that. But well, we got in touch with, um, I forgot what group, dad found that there was a church in Birmingham. Okay. So it seemed like a long, long trip then because the highways were different and yeah. it took us an hour or so to get to church, but we went every Sabbath. Wow. wow. Uh, to fast forward, we moved from Alabama and came to St. Louis in 1954, I believe. Mm -hmm. where we joined the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church, which at that time was the only church in the city. Okay, that's why it's and the mother church. <laughs> it's the mother church. It was then on um, Union, where it is now, Page oh. Union. Yeah, okay. but before that, I understand it was someplace else. We weren't here then. Mm. So when we came, it was where it currently is, on Page and Union. And my mother and father had already been baptized, but I was baptized by Elder Bradford. Mercy. At St. Louis. So he, very dear to my heart, very dear to my heart. One of those preachers that when he finished preaching, you wanted him to keep going. Have mercy. I don't know if you remember his style of preaching. He would always end with the thought that you want more, more, more. And he goes that, put that Bible down and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> like they say, drop the mic. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was at Berean. Uh, I was not a charter member of Northside when Northside was on Taylor and Greer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did go to Northside. But I was a charter member of the Southside Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. And that was a church that Elder S.T. Lewis started from 10 efforts. Okay. And uh, uh, the way he chose charter members was just to stand up and say, Sister King, Sister so and so, so you're going to go to Southside. Mm. Southside later became um, uh, Park Avenue. And then when they were having trouble finding places to worship, they had to change locations. Okay. So they moved to um, where we are now in University City, okay. which and it is now the Agape. Seventh Day Adventist Church, okay. one of the one of the Central States Conference's finest churches with the greatest pastor in the whole world. One okay. of the greatest pastors. Who's your pastor? World. Who's your pastor? Keith Hackle. Okay, now <laughs> we love him. We love him, Pastor Hackle. Yes, he's so kind. So, uh, back to the um, the um, Camp Shady Hill. 
-hmm. I remember Camp Shady Hill. Uh, I think sometimes we refer, refer to it as the best of times <laughs> and the worst of times. <laughs> But the good times outweighed the best, the bad times. Mm -hmm. I can remember the music vibrating over the, from under those big pavilions, oh, and you could man. hear it for miles around. Amen. As a teenager, I only was able to go, I think, on weekends when the bus went up, and we just walk around trying to be cute with the little heels stick getting down in that mud. And, <laughs> and all that the stuff. same thing. Yeah, and I, and then as I was a young adult, uh, I remember you and uh, my sons and <laughs> and many of the others, Bobby Waters and yeah, all of these young people, Valentine, yes, uh, ma'am, <laughs> Alex Bryant, um, mm -hmm. all of these young people at the uh, Camp Shady Hill. And we had some of the greatest speakers and some of the greatest mm -hmm. leaders. Uh, not that there weren't issues that we complained about. Mm -hmm. The leaky faucets, the toilets that <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> All the work that the ministers had to do to prepare the place for us to come. <laughs> but uh, we would, would, would I want to go back to Camp Shady Hill? No. That was for a time and for a season. Well, and it served its purpose. It served yeah, its purpose yeah, and it served it yeah. well. And the one thing that I wanted to talk about was all the greats that have come from those training days in the wow. churches, like yes, Pastor Valentine, who was a member of Linwood mm -hmm. and then running around up there and then pastoring there. Yes, and Pastor Alex Bryant was a member of Northside Seventh Day Adventist right. Church. Yes, and Camp Shady Hill and all the different things that he's done. And of course, now as you know, both of these men have gone on to do, and they're always willing to do whatever God assigns them to do in whatever capacity. And uh, Elder Valentine is now president of the North American Division of Seventh Day Adventist. I mean, Elder and Bryant, yeah. Vice, he's Elder Valentine is vice president right. of the North American Division and president of Adventist Ministry. Isn't that something? Media Ministry. Yeah, Media yeah. Ministry. Yes, yeah. And then El Bryant is vice president of the North American General Conference of the General Conference. Vice President of the General Conference and President of the North American Division. Have and mercy. we are so, so, so proud of them. And I can say that I am extremely proud and grateful to be a member of the Central States Conference. Amen. Amen. I mean, we got homegrown folk that the Lord has even tasked to go further up. Further. And just to think that you've had a hand in helping us to get where we are. You know, a lot of people are going to he keep hearing me say this. We're standing on you all's shoulders and you guys help shape us, you know, to just watch you all stay on a battlefield and you're just consistent with your belief and knowing who we are and encouraging us all along the way. Where would we be? Where would we be? I do appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. It's something when we look back and see what the Lord has done. Yes. And we're still yes. here. Yes. Yes. It does it my heart yes. good, you know. It yes, really, it really is. does. Yes, it does. It, it does. It, oh, yes. Sister King, I do appreciate it. I do appreciate you being in my life and all the memories that I have. And when we talk about Oak Camp Shady Hill, because you guys were at the main pavilion and we were at the youth pavilion. And yes. when you and I have talked about when when your boys Maurice and, and Clay were the what tent masters. That's what they were called for yes, the yes, tent yes. efforts and stuff. And you know, it's just a blessing that all of us grew to be like family. They're like my brothers, you know. I know if I would need yes. something or somewhere. You know, you know you know. can get it. You know you can yes, get it. Yes, ma'am. And yes, ma uh Claiborne, even though he's not actively in the church, back involved in the church, he says, mm -hmm. I never get too far away, mom. And yeah. I know that if i'm in kansas city if i'm in so and so i can just call somebody and say amen. that amen i'm in king's son i'm so and so amen. he said i know that i could get help amen so amen. that's because we are family 
Amen. And I thank and I you thank so the, much. I thank the uh, current administration because they really support the family and they the do. attitude of the conference being a family. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate Elder Bernard for trying to take care of us seniors. He and the administration, <laughs> all the nice things that he's done for us, the um, uh, senior banquets. Yeah, I think I we talked that. about that. <laughs> where the we had the fashion show. show. <laughs> and our pastors had to escort us down the aisle because many of us didn't want to use our canes or whatever. So we hold on to our pastor. <laughs> and that's the one where, like I told you before, he threw up his jacket and spun around and, yes. and it came back on. I was like, what? What's the president doing? You know, and yeah. I love that because he and his wife are down to earth. Yes. And they love God, but they love people. And you can feel the love of God through them. So we are blessed with our administration. You yeah, know, we have great Josiah leaders. And Tanya. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and ma Elder Ike, Pastor Eichner and mm -hmm. Nordia, all of our all of our pastors, uh, I, even though I don't know personally a lot of them now, because <laughs> I think Bobby Waters is probably one of the seniors at this point, isn't he? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Most yes, of the yeah. others are new, but they're very, right. very competent, very professional, and seem to be caring. So yes, we love them. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I love you very much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And I'll see you when I get to St. Louis. Please do. Okay. okay. Love you much. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Good evening. Good afternoon to everyone. Of course, you know, I'm Donna, the Elder Donna Brown, Women's Ministry Director of Central States Conference. And I have the privilege of, of being able to, I don't want to say interview, just have a chit chat with Elder Lucille Mitchell. Uh, she's an elder and um i really want to just turn everything over to her i've asked her to talk about how she came to know the lord uh even becoming a seven day adventist and testimonies that she wants to talk about and whatever keeps her going to be going so long and mention her age to be an inspiration to let us know age is but a number when it comes to doing the lord's work so Elder Mitchell, thank you for taking the time to meet with me for Women's History Month, because this is what it's all about. Well, good evening, Elder Brown. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity to talk about uh, the women whom I have known and the women of God and women like you. I really appreciate the fact that you are um, interviewing or just chick checking, however you say it, women who have been leaders in the Central State Conference for many, many years. Um, when, um, my, uh, as I said, um, my name is Elder Lucille B. Mitchell, and um, I came in the church when I was just a mere 20 years old. Now I'm gonna let you all do the math. <laughs> I was born in April the 5th, 1934, so you all figure that out, you good <laughs> mathematician. If you can't figure, you won't know, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so um, I, the, the way I came into the church, my brother uh, was a pastor, and there was a call porter named El, uh, Elder White. And these days, Central State, unfortunately, I think, do not have call porters. And for those of you younger people who are wondering, what in the world is a call porter? Well, a call porter were were men and women who were hired by the conference and they sold Ellen G. White books to make a living. So uh, my brother, Elder White, the call porter, had come to my brother's house and sold him some books. I never bought any of the books, but my brother always knew when he was doing something. I used to sing for my brother when he was having meetings and things like that. So he invited me to come to this meeting that Elder White was having at his home. Mm -hmm. So I came and as, a, and, and as a result of selling the books, Elder White offered Bible studies. Now my brother, of course, he thought he knew everything about the Bible, so he was not interested in Bible studies. Mm -hmm. But somehow or another, there was something that impressed me about Elder White. He was a very proper, fast speaking man and I decided that I would take the Bible study. So I didn't buy a book, 
but I took the Bible studies. And the Bible studies that I took was the 20th century Bible studies. And there was part one and part two. I don't even know if those Bible studies exist anymore. And uh, I, I did them at home. And of course, you know, uh, the way when you taking Bible lessons like that, I was mailing my lesson, they would mail them to me and I would mail the lessons back to them. So I, of what I know now, each time you did the studies, they would have you to make a commitment, you know, well, would you be interested in doing this? And you say, yes, not really paying too much, although I believe what it was saying, but I had never, no intention of ever leaving my church. Uh -huh. So after I finished the first set of lessons, I still wasn't sure I wanted to become an Adventist. So then I took part two. Of course, the part two was the Daniel Revelation, and et cetera. So anyway, when I completed, uh, the, uh, the Bible lessons, I started going to church Sunday and Saturday uh, <laughs> because I, yeah, I was brought up in Wayman Temple and I loved Wayman Temple. I was involved a lot with Wayman Temple AME Church. And uh, I, I, my mother thought, well, you know, that's crazy. I said, Mama, do you know? She said, oh, yeah. Uh, everybody know that Saturday is the Sabbath. You got plenty of Jews around us who know this. But uh, my mother always was pretty, and she said, but you know, that's just crazy stuff. You don't need to join that church. But she wasn't real belligerent about it. And so finally, by me going to church on Saturday and Sunday and couldn't make up my mind, there was a lady in the church that befriended me. She was single. Her name was Mary E. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be visiting the church on that particular Saturday, and I was convicted. But I, I just couldn't move. My, I, I tried to move, but I couldn't. And she leaned over and whispered to me and said, why don't you do it? You know God oh, is calling you to do it. And I walked up there and joined the church. And that was uh, September of 1954. Wow. And C.E. Bradford was the pastor. And I think we were he, maybe probably his first big church. Wow. And so I've been in Berea now since 1954. And uh, I, as, I, as we were talking before, I've served in every office in our church, except probably being Sabbath school superintendent. Mm. And um, the thing that, uh, as, as I said before, because I, we, there was a group of us that came into the church at that time. Some of the people out there, very few may, but Nora Beasley and all of us came in and we had come in from churches where we were working in the church. Okay. And so when we came to this church, we, uh, they, at that time, they were very sophisticated, very cold people. Uh, honestly, they were. And, <laughs> oh, no. and, uh, they, they were not very friendly. Uh, I call them the gang of eight. They were the runners of the church. But, but because we, were, we didn't have sense enough to know our place, we just started doing stuff. And, and doing missionary work as we had done in, in our previous churches. Yes, ma'am. And, and so they would say to us, oh, they're young. They got zeal without knowledge. And, and, wow. and, and, but we just kept working. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it wasn't long. They were very shocked if when people started. Because all you know, all, most of everybody in that church, they, had either, they were third, fourth, I don't know, maybe fifth generation Adventists. Uh, and so all of this group of us who came in were never had never been Adventists. In fact, most of us had never heard of Adventists until mm -hmm. we joined uh, Berean. Wow. And uh, so uh, during the years, um, I became uh, the first women at, at, at that time, uh, church would go like this. on set, And I, I really miss that too. Some things is good to have the new things, but some things it's nice to have the old things too. And maybe some churches are doing this, but I don't know. But I know we aren't doing it. We would have Sabbath school. Sabbath school would start at 9 15. Mm -hmm. and, and you had a committee to come in at 9 15. You would have prayer. Uh, you would sing a song. We told a mission story. There was a mission story every 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 Sabbath school. There was a mission story, and then you had Sabbath school lessons. Right. Uh, also, something that is not very popular in the, in our 
I don't know about the other, I can only speak about this district. I love this district. I've been in it for six or seven years. So of, of course I love it. I'd have been mm -hmm. gone somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, after, uh, and so there was 13th Sabbath. Oh, and I remember 13th each, Sabbath. Uh, and classes, each class had a banner. And oh boy, we would we would fight the rage to get the banner, the class to hold the banner of the loneliness. And on 13th Sabbath, uh, uh, there was nice money's raised for mm -hmm. mission, uh, which of course now isn't being done, at least at my church. It may be someplace else. Mm -hmm. But like I said, all things that the church was doing was not bad. And some things really was helpful because of the 13th Sabbath offering yeah uh all of that went to the mission field and it helped to our church to grow Amen. after sabbath school we had morning service and at that time we didn't have praise team we had choirs mm -hmm. and so we had of course the senior choir that uh, we young people said all them old folks singing all those <laughs> old hymns that we didn't like because <laughs> we were young at the time the senior <laughs> choir sung like two or three sabbath uh, uh, a, a month and mm -hmm. then the gospel course, which was us young adults, we okay. would sing once the a once the month, or if it was a youth or uh, the youth choir would sing mm -hmm. once the month. Okay. There was a thing called uh, a missionary uh, uh, missionary volunteer. Uh, yes, but now it's called lay activities. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that's where that's where becoming uh, 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 leaders of, of of lay activities how it became that. There was a guy, and some of the people out there will know Brother Legs. He was a kind of an old fashioned oh. man. Did okay. you know Brother Legs? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I don't. I know he was probably young, young age. But anyway, he was the lay activity leader for Berean for many, many years. And, and the lay activity, every first Sabbath in the month, the lay activity had, was in charge of the Sabbath ser service. And that would be you. what. And so what they the, the preacher would give us the first Sabbath of the month. And on the first Sabbath of the month, uh, then all of the mission work that was being done throughout the month, the reports were given on how many Bible studies that were given. And see, you didn't have to beg people because the church was so unified around the lay activity Sabbath that people wanted you to know uh, how many Bible studies. So a lot of Bible studies were being given by the lay activities department wow. because that was the department where, where they trained you to give Bible studies. You went out and gave Bible studies. And of course, there was all that kind of little competition, you know, yeah. uh, of people wanting to, wanting to say uh, uh, their group had given so many Bible studies. And a lot of people mm -hmm. came into the church Right. via the lay activities department mm -hmm. so much so that um uh, uh as i stayed in the church longer and became lay activity leaders mm -hmm. uh i uh the first as a matter of fact i was the first lay activities leader in the church as i said before i've been uh -huh. the first a lot of stuff because yeah. <laughs> like, as i told you when i yes, came in the church i was used to working in the church right, where i right. came from Yes, ma'am. And uh, so when I became lay activity leader, I started a GED program in the church. Wow. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Remember Actually, you telling me. I remember you. Wow. Uh, 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 yeah. Well, I started a GED uh, as part of our lay activities. Uh, we had tutoring for our young people. And those were the days when, you know, the short skirt first started coming out. And, he, of course, <laughs> Adventists were no different from all the other girls and young folks. That's folk. right. Yes, they were wearing their short skirts too. And so uh, we had a program <laughs> that would help the young ladies uh, uh, learn how to wear those short skirts with tights so oh, that uh, okay. so that they, they it, it would look seamless and they wouldn't, all of the legs and stuff wasn't showing, but still they were in style Amen. with all of their gotcha. little friends. But <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> but, but anyway, I heard Ella Eichner say we were in church all day, but we were doing stuff in church. I was right. listening to this sermon. We weren't just sitting there because right. uh, because lay activities, uh, uh, the young people, after the morning church was over, we brought our lunches and we'd eat lunch 
And then we would go out and we would do visit nursing homes and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and pass our tracks and all kinds of stuff. And then we would come back for youth meeting. And at that time, the youth meeting, I guess it's still the same, was from 16 to 34. Right. And, and you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And you're right. The earlier I was wrong when I was saying um, MV, it was personal ministry, went from lay to personal ministry. In the afternoon mm -hmm. went from missionary volunteer to Adventist <laughs> youth. I yes. know. I remember the little yellow papers they used to fill out in personal ministry, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm glad you remembered it. You know, uh, and I, I just kind of wanted to go through the church service how it was, how it was. I appreciate it. And we were, our young people, you did not have to beg our young people to do. We were on fire to get mm -hmm. out and do missionary studies and stuff like that. Yes, and so, um, um, and as a result of, of that, uh, 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 many of our young people stayed in church and a lot of them uh, continued on in church even after they got grown and their mm -hmm. children got grown. And the emphasis on Bible study was so great that there was a, a that was sabbath school we had a pastor there that came to our church named c Sampson miles mm -hmm. and uh at that time it was only one church that's why it's known as as the mother church the mother church okay Berean was the only church in st louis mm -hmm. and so pastor c Sampson miles felt that we had all these members in this church that he, we should follow Sister White's example and plant little lights in various areas of St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, wow. And, and so uh, there was a group of us who went out to Kirkwood. Kirkwood, uh, it didn't look like it does now. It kind of looked like Kenwood, Kenlock do now. It looked that. like you were going to an Africa place when, uh, uh, okay. when we went out there to uh, do this. Uh, we were on loan out there for a year. And um, Mary Thomas, the Harris's, you know, Paul Harris. Yes, ma'am. His father and mother, they were in that bunch. Uh, uh, Brother Harris and Sister Harris, Mary Thomas and myself and my husband. Uh, and I can't think of right now who all the rest of us, but there was about 10 or 12 of us okay. that went out to Kirkwood. And what it was really like going to Africa, I'm not kidding. We would sit around a big old stove and put wood in it, and we would have our little services, and then we'd put on our galoshes and coats and go on and knock on doors out in Kirkwood. Wow. And as a result of that, that little group helped to plant the Kirkwood Church out Amen. at in Kirkwood. So we actually planted that church. Praise there God. was another group that came out of Berean. See, we were busy. Well, you, I, I, I think today, um, I don't know what it is. I guess there's so many things that distract people. But what I find, I find is people really do what they want to do. Yes, they really do. And I look at you and how emotional you get because how you love the Lord. I do. And if other, if our young people love the Lord like I see you love the Lord, we would not have to beg people to go out and do Bible studies. But there are some things that our leaders, and I'm not criticizing them, I know this is 22, okay. but there are some things that happened in the, in the 60s that was valuable for the church, especially like I talk about the personal ministry department. The personal ministry department was the backbone of the church. It was the working horse of the church. It was the one that went out there and did stuff for the church, brought members in and planted churches. Yeah. And you don't see that today. We also had Bible uh, uh, workers in those days. And I know we said we can't find money for Bible workers, but Bible workers are valuable. You, When I look at, uh, what is that, Pastor Bird? Yes, Look, he never starts an effort until he has Bible workers who go before him, knocking on doors, uh, uh, giving stuff. And so when he come in, he does the reaping. And Amen. Bible workers are worth their monies. And Amen. it's too bad that we don't have Bible workers in this conference, especially, that we yes, need man. those Bible workers to help train people, to motivate people, and basically to teach people the Adventist lifestyle kinds of yeah. things. So we had we had Bible workers 
and and we all learn to give Bible. I don't know whether you probably have never even heard of this. There was a book called Training Light Bearers. That, yeah, I, yes, I heard of. Yes, ma'am. My parents, my dad. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And 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 so that that book, the Training Light Bearers and stuff, and of course that was always the Pathfinders uh, in, in our church. So yeah. every part of the church was geared toward uh learning uh, learning our doctorate living our doctorate being involved and when you're very involved with your church activities the world doesn't distract you as much as it does now Amen. and i know there's a lot of distraction that the young people have today of course we didn't have those those the distraction like the internet and all of those kinds of things yes. but um so anyway uh we planted that church out there well when sister when dr when C. Sampson Miles left, uh, I'm not going to name all the preachers, courses, but, but just ones that <laughs> uh, that really was involved with church and really pushed and tried to do things differently than yeah. what some others had done. Okay. Uh, then there, uh, uh, so when C. Sampson, I don't know whether he was first or last, I don't know the order now. Right. I do have in my in my files, everybody who knows me know I keep a file. And I have a file <laughs> on all these. I keep a file on all these things. So all right. Ella C. Sampson, not C. Sampson, uh, Pastor Gabe Taylor Sr. Mm -hmm. came to our church. Mm -hmm. And 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 for some reason, that's when a lot of us who were not third and fourth and fifth generation Adventists were given opportunities to lead departments. Amen. And, and so uh, when he came to the church, uh, he was very interested in developing uh, uh, all of his members in the Amen. church. And so, uh, uh, it, it, and let's be fair, back in those days, there were cliques like they are now. It, yeah. it, it, was, just, it was just so. And yeah. we all knew the cliques, but because we were so, I told him sometimes it's good to be ignorant we were so ignorant, we just didn't care what they yes, thought. And so we yes, we were just working for the Lord. Amen. And then, but Ella Taylor would teach the church on church doctrine and how to do things. He he believed a good administrator. Amen. And uh, uh and not only me, but most of the people in my age group now, of course, they're going on, they're passed on. And as I speak to you now, there's only a maybe about maybe three or four of us in my age group that that's left at, at the church today mm -hmm. so uh following elder uh uh gabe taylor senior uh uh elder gabe taylor jr our church is the only one of two churches where a father and a son Pastor. preached at the same church have mercy <laughs> and, and so of course uh, uh i knew elder gabe taylor jr and when he came to our church uh, back in 1992, uh, Eileen Nelson and I, we had been leaders, you know, we had been leaders and everything. Folks were used to us leading out. We did, both of us, we did a lot of first the first. I think we may have been, you said some ladies was, was a little bit behind me or maybe before me. But I, I think, think after you. <laughs> okay. I, 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 Eileen and I, I think, was the first two women elders in Central States Conference. Mm -hmm. And Elder Gabe Taylor Sr. Jr. made us elders. He told me, in fact, I called him after I talked to you because mm -hmm. I couldn't remember. And he said 1992. So that would have made us be, uh, this year would make, uh, make uh, Eileen pass, uh, unfortunately, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 30, I was uh, 30 years this year. Eileen uh, was the uh, head elder of, uh, mm -hmm. when, when Pastor Bernard came to our church. Eileen was head elder of our church for about nine years. Okay. Uh, so he kept her on as, as head elder. So I don't know how many women in Central States have been head elders. But I know Eileen was one of the earliest uh, that I know of. Wonderful woman, very talented. Uh, she was a very educated, very art, artsy lady. You know, wrote poems and songs for special wow. occasions. 
And so in 1983, there was a guy named Manuel Clay. This guy always had a lot of ideas and he always had ideas, but you know, these people who have ideas and never follow through on, that was Manuel Clay. So he decided that, um, that the church needed a radio program that was not um, run by pastors, that it would be a lay ministry program. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people out there in the radio audience will know about the Bible Answer Crusade radio program. Amen. That was the name. That program started in 1983 and went to, let me see, I found something here, and went through uh, May the 18th, 19, 2019. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was the chairperson of the Radio Bible Answer Crusade for 30 years. Amen. And after I retired, I stayed with the program and Minnie Simmons became the chairperson. Of course, it didn't last long after, uh, uh, after that, but uh, uh -huh. she gave it a good try. And everybody will probably know uh, in, in our program, uh, we had every minister who was somebody on the program. Uh, for example, I, I don't know. Can you see that? Yes, ma'am. I can see it. The I, I Bible and 36th it. annual celebration, May 18, 2019. Yes, right. Yes, ma'am. Wow. And so, so there has never been another program led by anybody in the Central States Conference that, that lasted that long. So and it was it, it was uh, sponsored by it was Manuel Clay's idea. Okay. But uh, I and uh, and others were the one who carried the program out. And my uh, Ben Steele, you may know him. He's a member of uh, of, of Agape. I was the chair. Mm -hmm. And Ben Steele was the uh, treasurer for the BAC. Okay. And so the two of us. Uh, worked together for that organization. And we had uh, every minister, uh, believe it or not, um, that was somebody in the Adventist church uh, what happened on our anniversary day. And I'm just gonna read a few names to, to let you know sure. who were some of the people who, sure. who, who, who were there yes, uh, that you probably would know. Um, let me see, because you are young, so. Do, do you know uh, do you know Dr. Rock? Yes, ma'am. Matter of fact, when I went to Oakwood, I sang in a trio three in his name, and we traveled with him to represent the school. I do know him. Okay. Uh, have you heard of Hyvet Williams? She's Not a woman really. pastor. She she is the pastor of Hyvet was the it was the uh, senior pastor of the Camp Hill SDA Church. Uh, uh, and she is one of the women that was uh, uh, one of the women leaders that um, was, you know, was commissioned. Let's put it okay. that way. Okay. And she was doing all that. I, and I mentioned her. Uh, even we had, uh, let me see, we had Danny Shelton. Uh, I'm trying to see where Danny is. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see if it, can you see these names? Yes, they're kind of blurred, but. Um... Okay, well, you can yes, see all of the names of the pastors that were there. Okay, and what you can do is take a picture for me and send mm -hmm. it because the purpose of these recordings is so we can have an archive of history. Okay. Our church. Well, so I appreciate uh, if you do that for me. Okay, well, Brother Danny Schelt, the president of Three Angels Broadcast Network, was our 21st speaker for the oh. Bible Answer Crusade. Uh, 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 let me see, uh, when, when was, uh, Ella Bradford was our fifth speaker. Uh, uh, I'm trying to, uh, Dr. Delbert Baker of Oakwood College was our wow. 17th speaker. And wow. so anybody who was doing something at the time of those 30 some years mm -hmm. uh, 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 came to our program and the conference acknowledged us. And so I'm, that's enough of the Bible Answer Crusade because there's so much to tell <laughs> of what we did with that. And, um, but the most important thing that a, a lot of time, as I told you, I was determined that I was not going to rust out. 
I was going to wear out. Wear out. Yes, ma'am. I, I, was, I was going to wear out. And yes, even now, for those who cannot count, I turn. I will turn 88 this April the 5th. And I'm still, at this point, I'm still working for the Lord. I am the chairship person. I'm, I'm, I'm now the assistant, because uh, I started giving up some of those committees uh, <laughs> of, of the building and site, the building and site committee. Yes, I'm the assistant head elder of our church uh, still, and a lot of other committees and stuff that I'm on. But I'm not, I, I, I really have tried to, as I told you, tried to retire. And, and I keep saying, I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire. These <laughs> other people need to do it. But I told you the story about Ella Eichner. So when Ella Eichner came to our church, I said, well, I've been here long enough. I'm really going to retire. And he said, well, Ella Mitchell, you're wrong. You can't retire on my side. I said, I don't know why. He <laughs> said, well, he said, well, John was 90 years old when God gave him the revelation. You ain't 90 yet. <laughs> But <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of the the other thing that we did. Um, uh, uh, I also opened up a daycare center for our church that was accredited by the city of St. Louis and the state of Missouri. And you know how difficult that is to get a daycare certified by both the city and the state. So we've done, uh, and I think the fact that uh, uh, I have kept busy working in the church, number one, it kept me. Amen. And number two, I, especially when I became single, by going, by, uh, by uh, working in the church and keeping busy in the church, it kept me from being lonely. My church family is my family as well as my uh, blood relatives. And the thing that I see but as I said before, there are some things that it's good to have, and there may be churches, and I pray that it is, that still have Sabbath school, where they have a Sabbath school program for all age groups, yes, and, uh, and, and where they are out actually in the community doing Bible work. Mm -hmm. And the people have to understand that soul winning is not just for the pastor. Soul Amen. winning is all of our soul winning is all of our duties and our jobs. Yes, but our people need training. And in some ways, and, and you know, it, in some and, and I say today that we got a lot of young pastors, and a lot of them are excellent. I have no no qualm, but a lot of times uh we talk about uh, justice, social justice, it's not new. You right. know, in the 60s, there was a lot of social justice in the churches and yes, stuff. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing the Martin Luther King Day, so we had the social justice, but we had the soul winning justice as well. Come on. And, Amen. And so we, we need to remember that when we get through with it all, our job is uh, our main course of action should be winning souls for Christ. And I just want to end by thanking you for having me on. And I will send you a copy of this, uh, a, a picture. I, I, I'll, I'll put a copy in your hand uh, of, okay. of, of the radio broadcast and the people that, um, uh, we, that we had the good fortune mm -hmm. of inviting and supporting us. And I want to say this. The Bible, the BAC, we call it the BAC, the Bible broadcast started before Pastor Bernard, Pastor Eichner were here. But when they came on board, as each new pastor came, all of them supported the Bible Answer Crusade. Amen. They, Amen. They, 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 gave us, they gave us an offering once a year when we had our anniversary. And Pastor Bernard was our last speaker our 36th speaker, but mm -hmm. uh, he came in, Pastor Eichner was our speaker twice. And uh, I, I thank God because the, uh, I'm the we were on WGNU and we had a radio audience of over 200,000 people Have who mercy. listened to us every Sunday. So mm -hmm. I pray that, that uh, and, and our program was divided up 
into four sections. We had the health section, we had the uh, prophecy section, and we had uh, the, um, the health, the prophecy, and gospel, okay. and, and the gospel. And we had team leaders over each one of those programs. And so, uh, and each one of the teams were on for three months. So there was a consistency when the people listened to us. Amen. And uh, uh, so I I'm thankful that the Lord have uh, allowed me to keep my, uh, most of my mind, sometimes I wonder what <laughs> no, Your mind's pretty sharp, ma'am. You done went back and brought some history and that was what I wanted. And I'm gonna share this with you. We do have some that are still doing the personal ministry. I know my church does outreach regularly. We do have Sabbath school. We have a youth program. And also I know Coach K that lives there in St. Louis, the Bible Discovery Center, they're teaching discipleship. And we're trying to promote that conference wide because you're right, some things we have lost. And so now it's our time for us because we're standing on you all's shoulders to pull that forward and get these young people ready, just like we had to go through something. So mm -hmm. I just really want to thank you so much for your time and the oh, love you yeah. shared with me. I appreciate it. And I'm gonna try to remember happy birthday on April the 5th. <laughs> and also, <laughs> and also I want to acknowledge if the Lord doesn't come, when we have our women's retreat in October, so I can acknowledge all of my matriarchs of the conference that have kept us going all these years because you guys are the backbone You're well the backbone. i tell you i tell you uh i appreciate all of you young women that love the lord because i was i was also a women leader and 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 when you are a leader a, a women's leader or any other leader people do not realize the sacrifice that one has to make <laughs> in order to make the program be successful. And as I was talking to somebody, many times you are doing it all, but you make it look like everybody else is helping. <laughs> and I, 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 I've been there <laughs> and, I, and I know that. So I appreciate the effort that you're putting forth as our women's leader for the Central States Conference. Thank and I'm you. glad to, 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 uh, to see young women like yourself and Dr. Denise Johnson, uh, uh, who are out there doing all of the many programs that I know you all do, but I want you to know that God sees it all. Amen. And don't Amen. get weary in doing well. And so Amen. blessings to you and to the ministry. Thank you, thank you. And I'm gonna pass it on to the other women that are doing it, but thank you so much and I love you. And God has blessed me to talk to you. So with that being said, I appreciate it. And let's have a word of prayer. Oh, go ahead. Just before you do that, you told me to mention our oh. Dynamic Seven. Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, women. Yes. Our Dynamic Seven Women's Program is a seven of us ladies. Uh, some of them are not participating every day, but at least three or four of us every day at two o'clock, we're praying for our church conference, for the world, for the homeless, for our, our pastors and our administrators, because we know that prayer changes things. Amen. And so as I told you before, I'm, I, I had not met you before, yes, but if you're working for Central States Conference, we have been praying for you for the last two years. And all of those of you, the pastors, the administrators, and the secretaries, and all of the people in all the churches that are still uh, uh, going ahead and doing God's work. We pray every day from uh, uh, two to three on uh, five days a week. On, on Tuesday, we have Bible study that is uh, conducted by Denise Johnson and Pastor uh, and, and Miss Page and Sister Page. On Wednesday night, I do prayer meeting along with Elder Judy Lane. And on uh, Thursday night, Sister Page and I, that's when we pray for the conference and when we pray for our churches. That Thursday night prayer meeting is just for our conference and all of the activities that are going on. 
Wow. And as you know, uh, as you know, uh, Berean has been without a pastor for mm -hmm. over eight months. Mm -hmm. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the various pastors and elders who have come to Berean and kept us uplifted. And also to thank Pastor Bernard and Pastor Josiah uh, for coming and keeping us uplifted. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I know there's other, other church, uh, at least at one uh, another church, who doesn't have a pastor, but he and Pastor Bernard and Pastor Josiah, they make it their business to try to come and speak with us at least mm -hmm. once a month. And Amen. so I'm grateful to uh, Pastor Bernard. He was my pastor too yes. <laughs> at, at one point. And, uh, but still with all they have to do, they have not left us motherless or fatherless. <laughs> And so I just want to take the opportunity to thank I him thank and, and our administrators. Thank you so now much. You can pray for us. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I thank you so much. I really do. I really, you're a sharp woman. You're a sharp woman. And I appreciate the Lord preserving you the way that he's done. And I'm going to take some lessons from you and take all the advice that you've given me. And I do appreciate you praying for us. So with that being said, God is good. And can we close with prayer? Sure. Lord, I thank you so much for Elder Mitchell. I thank you for her, her journey and the sacrifice she has made and sharing all the history of the churches. And Lord, I just appreciate it. Lord, bless her and cover her and help us to learn from our elders. Lord, we need to learn from them and take the torch and carry on. We know you're about to come. In Jesus' yes, name Lord. we do pray. Amen. Amen. Send Thank me your you address so and I'll send you this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you. Okay, be safe. Yes, ma'am. I will. Thanks. All bye, right. bye bye. Told you. Wasn't that wonderful? God has truly blessed us uh, with these future chit chats. God has truly blessed us. But I want to talk to you real quick about our future guest. We've got um, Sister Phyllis Ware Lee, who used to be our conference treasurer, but she also was our first and only woman president that we had. She was an interim president. So we're going to be chit-chatting with her along with the office workers at that time, uh, Sister Matoma, Sister uh, White, and I believe Sister Harriet. I'm going to reach out to her so they can be a part of this. I'm excited about that. And we're also talking to Sister uh, Groves out of Denver. Uh, she's one of my elders. She's 94. And uh, Sister Paris, also from Park Hill, Elder Allen from Beacon Light, Sister Shirley Platt from Bethel. And that's just enough for now. I'm not going to keep going. But remember, if there's someone in your church, 70 and older, and they've been here through even before there was a Camp Shady Hill, let me know so we can record them. I'm excited about that. I enjoy listening to the history and just see how far we've come by faith. God is just so good. So now that's enough for now. Um, I want to let you all know our retreat will be this October, October 20 through the 23rd, or yeah, 20, 20 through the 23rd. And the theme is Women in Prayer. It's going to be at Kansas City Suites at the airport there. And our guest speaker is Karen Abercrombie the lady from War Room who did all the praying in that closet. That's who one of our speak, uh, featured speakers is going to be. So I was great to get her. We started doing, working on this last year. So I'm excited about that. We also have First Lady Des Bryant. Uh, her husband is president of NAD. She's the First Lady, but she sure is a good speaker. And I've known her for a lot of years. So I'm grateful she said she would come. And we also have Chaplain Cobbs. Um, her husband and she, they're also, they're dear to my heart. And uh, she's a she's a chaplain. She was also in the military. So of course, you know, I love my military family. Woohoo! And so she's going to be a part of us. We're also going to have jo uh, Jordan Shonifer. And we're also going to have Brittany Fatoma because we're going to invite our teens age 12 to 19. I did say 13, but, and if you feel your child is mature enough, 
I don't have a problem with you bringing them. You know, you moms are going to be responsible for it anyway. And the and the fee is one hundred and thirty five dollars for the women and one hundred for the teens. And that includes all of your food, your bag. We're going to have uh, uh, prayer journals and um, uh, we're going to also offer T-shirts. And there'll be some more information coming out about uh, Sister Karen's book. I also will give you some more information about vendors. You know, we have some entrepreneurs out there. So you'll be able to set up your tables and um, and show us what you got. You know, I love to promote our sisters. I want our teens to know how we can sit there and affirm one another. They see enough badness on TV, but now they can come and see how we reaffirm one another. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, you're going to be responsible for your own rooms. We have a good rate. The flyer will come out sometime this weekend. And uh, so you'll be able to make your your uh, reservations online. So again, all that information will be up. If you have any questions, mostly everybody's got my number pretty much. Uh, so just call the conference office and uh, Sister Barbara, which I love her to death, you know, she's a hard worker. So I want to give kudos to her. She's so patient, but even keep also keep her family in prayer. Keep her family in prayer. They're going through a time and I know what it's like. So we're her family and we need to stand by her. So I want to thank you guys so much. Keep on praying and thank you so much for joining us. And I'll see you next Thursday if the Lord doesn't come. Amen. Amen. Thank you.